Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Badger Breakdown, brought to you by U.S. Cellular. I'm Mike Lucas for UWBadgers.com. I'm joined by Matt LePay, the voice of the Badgers. I suppose before we move forward to Illinois, we have to look back on what Wisconsin's defense was able to do to Northwestern. And I don't care who was there, who wasn't. I mean, to shut down the Wildcats to the extent they did was mighty impressive. 30 points plus wow. in seven straight games, and these guys held them to two field goals. And and you're right, you know, Kane Coulter missed a good chunk of the game. Venerick Mark missed a good chunk of the game. They still have a lot of other weapons. And for Wisconsin to do what it did, it was fun to watch. And I think those guys on the defensive side would tell you it was even more fun to be a part of it. They, uh, they were turned loose a little bit, and they made the Wildcats pay for it. To be honest, I'm not sure we could just single out one player. You always look to Chris Borland, and he was the leading tackler. But they got so many different contributions from some unlikely sources in some cases. Well, Nate Hammond among those getting yeah. a, getting a sack. Seven sacks, seven different players. Vince Beagle getting involved again. It's it's a lot of fun watching this team this year, Mike. I think both sides of the ball. But for Saturday, for our, this part of the conversation, the defense, you continue to see Dave Aranda and that defensive staff tinker with the personnel. You could see different groupings, various down and distant situations. Well, Tanner McAvoy and the way he's embraced the role. Came here as a quarterback, played a little receiver, and for now, he's found a pretty good spot at safety. And it's kind of interesting because he's really flown under the radar as far as his, his conversion or transition to, to defense. I mean, everyone was really excited uh, when they signed McAvoy, the quarterback, and then they recognized that he wasn't quite ready and fell behind the other QBs, and then he got hurt. And then but slowly but surely, he's worked his way into the starting lineup. Yeah, and Gary Anderson is excited about him. I'm sure Bill Bush is as well. You have a guy at that position, 6'6", who can run. And what's been pretty easy to notice, and you didn't know what, because he's been an offensive player primarily, you didn't know how well he would tackle, and we'll continue to see that. But the one thing, he's not afraid to throw his body around. He's been involved here these last two games. He's not afraid to stick a hat into the, into the pile and make a play. The one thing about this league, though, is that you really can't rest. You don't get any breaks. And so now Wisconsin moves on to Illinois. Nathan Sheilhaus has been in the Big Ten for a long time. And he can pose problems for defense. He's a good quarterback. He's, uh, you know, they're, they're not running him as much this year, Bill Cubitt, the offensive they coordinator. They want to save him, don't they? Yeah, I think they do. And, and I can see why. Because this guy a couple years ago put up some big-time numbers. And last year is a little bit different. Um, maybe not the numbers weren't as impressive. There's been a transition there. And he's uh, maybe some of the statistics have suffered. But he has some pretty good weapons. Josh Ferguson, a very good running back and, and the leading receiver in the country in terms of yards, uh, receiving yards among running backs. Donovan Young is more of a bruiser. Uh, they're young in some areas, but they have, uh, the Nebraska game aside, they've shown an ability to put up some pretty good numbers. I remember the last time the Badgers played in Champaign, that was a struggle. I think a lot of people assumed Wisconsin was going to go down there and win handedly. It didn't turn out that way. In fact, Illinois could have been up by three touchdowns at halftime. Yeah, Wisconsin defense and special teams helped turn that game around. Uh, Illinois is up 14 to nothing. There's a, a mishandled punch snap, and Connor O'Neill pounces on it, leads to a touchdown early. But they're still down 10 at the half. And in the second half, the defense forces a turnover, and then Wisconsin goes on one of those vintage 30-yard drives that takes yeah. about half a quarter. Inch by <laughs> they inch. Did. But Illinois was uh, it was a pretty stingy group that day. Wisconsin was able to, to pull away in the end, but it was anything but easy. And the one thing you always have to factor into your thinking when you're playing an underdog like Illinois is that, that this could make their season. It is a night game. Uh, they're going to rally around it. Uh, they should be fresh. They had the bye week. Yeah, they, they should be fresh, and, and I think a term that Gary Anderson will use uh, a lot, they're salty. It's been a long time since they've won a Big Ten game. It's been, let's face it, it's been a couple of years. It's growing uh, old, it, isn't it? It is, and, and they, have, they have a lot of young talent, defensive side of the ball. Uh, I think they're, they're kind of, in some ways, I don't know if I want to say trading today for tomorrow, but there are some young guys out there who are learning the hard way right now, yet, there are some pretty good linebackers, uh, Mason Monheim, uh, Jonathan Brown, uh, a couple of guys who move around really well. And uh, there, there's some depth there. That they're not afraid to rotate guys in their defensive line. So is Wisconsin on paper better? Yes, but Illinois is at home. And in the Big Ten, we, we, you see teams that you think are near the bottom rise up and play pretty well. Now, when Jared Aberderis was injured in the first half against Northwestern, it opened the door for some of the other receivers to take a, a more expanded role in the offense, which kind of leads us to the question. Yeah, it does. This week's U.S. Cellular Question of the Week comes from Mark in Sheboygan. Wants to know specific to this game, Mike, who do we see as a receiver besides Jared Aberderis 
who could step up and have a big night against the Illini. The beauty is it, it does really vary week to week, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't think anyone on the coaching staff could just single out somebody today and project that they're going to do something on Saturday to help the team win. It hasn't happened that way yet. I mean, you have a variety of different receivers. All have different strengths, and that's what they're trying to maximize. Yeah, it was fun to see Alex Erickson make a nice catch to help set up a touchdown. I, I still, though, I keep overlooking the guy until he does something, and he's done it enough. Now they gotta, they got to quit overlooking him. The old reliable, Jeff Duckworth. If there's another receiver that I think could come up with some, with some plays that are significant in the passing game, I guess Duck would be my first pick. And the one thing that doesn't show up in the stats is Jordan Frederick's blocking. Yeah. And it, he's been a real key factor in some of the long runs the Badgers have had, notably Melvin Gordon this year. Yeah, you know what? He's a tough kid. He is. I, I really, he's, he's one of many, but you could say that about pretty much all these guys. You really root for him to do well. It'd be fun to see Jordan Frederick get involved in the passing game, but even if he doesn't, as you said, he's a factor because he blocks people. We, might, we thank you, Mark, for your question of the week, for having your question chosen. You will receive a Badger prize pack, including some authentic Adidas Badger apparel. If you have a question for us, just send it our way. Hashtag a Badger Breakdown. And if we take your question as the U.S. Cellular Question of the Week, you will win. And that really sets up our final key to this matchup. It has to be Wisconsin's running a game again against the Illinois defense. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting when you when when Wisconsin's preparing week to week, opposing coaches know all about that fly sweep. Now credit Ohio State, Buckeyes did a good job against it, but it's a pretty short list of <laughs> teams that are, you know with with what Melvin is able to do hitting the edge and what that's doing opening up the inside game, either Melvin Gordon or James White. So I, I would imagine these guys they'll they'll test they'll they'll see want to see how Illinois holds up against the run. For Matt LePay, I'm Mike Lucas for UWBadgers.com. Thanks for watching Badger Breakdown, brought to you by U.S. Cellular.